In this video, I want to provide an introduction to a technique which is known as importance sampling. And importance sampling gives us a way to approximate quantities of interest for a given distribution, even if we can't directly sample from that particular distribution. And to introduce this technique, I'm going to use an example. The example I'm going to use is throwing two different dice. And I've shown the probability distribution for each of these dice above. On the left here, we have a fair dice, and that dice has got sort of a constant probability of one sixth across all of its six possible numbers. And we're going to call that probability distribution a discrete distribution f of x. On the right here, I have a die which is instead biased towards the sort of early numbers. And we're going to represent this bias dies probability distribution by g of x. So first of all, we're going to imagine that we had these probability distributions and we want to use these to help us to calculate the mean of each of the dies. So in the left hand case here, we can calculate the mean number that we would throw. And we just do that by taking the expectation of x and x here is the number that we throw on any particular throw of the dice. And that's just equal to the sum over all possible values of x, of x times f of x. I note here that in the expectation, I put f here to emphasize the fact that we are taking the expectation with respect to the fair dies probability distribution. So we can sort of do this sum here because we've only got six numbers to sum over. So we'll just get one times one sixth plus two times one sixth plus dot 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 plus six times one sixth. So just times each of the numbers by one sixth. And if you do the calculation there, you get a mean of three and a half. But what happens if we didn't actually have this distribution to hand? How could we then calculate the mean of this dice? Imagine that, for example, the die was in some sort of box and we couldn't see it. So we don't actually know what its probability distribution is. Well, then we could still estimate its mean if we were able to shake that die and see the number that resulted each time. So basically all we would do is we would replace this population mean by the sample equivalent, which would just be one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of xi, where xi has been drawn from f. So by putting an f up above here, I'm not meaning x to the power of f, I'm meaning that each of the results of throwing the die is from throwing the fair dice. So n here is the sample size, it's just the number of times that I throw the die. Okay, what about for the bias die? Well, I could do a kind of similar thing. I could just do, to work out the mean, the expectation of x, but now I'm doing it with respect to g, because the bias die has a different probability distribution. And to work out that expectation, I now just sum over x, so x again going from one to six, of x times g of x. And as we'll sort of see in a minute, I've chosen this distribution such that it has a mean, which is approximately 1.9. And of course, again, I could have worked out that mean or I could have approximated that mean by just throwing the bias die a number of times and then just taking the sample average. So the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, where xi is drawn from g. If we only had access to the fair die, and we wanted to work out the mean of the biased one, so in other words, we can throw the fair die, but we can't throw the biased die, could we still nonetheless come up with a reasonably good approximation to its mean? Well, it turns out you can using a technique called importance sampling. And to think about this technique, I'm just gonna write out again the mean of the biased die, so that's just the expectation of x with respect to g, and that's just equal to the sum over x, just repeating what I have above here, of x times g of x. But now what I can do is I can actually use a bit of a sleight of hand. I could rewrite this as the sum of x oh, well, over all possible x values of x times g of x over f of x times f of x. So it's a sleight of hand that I've used here because essentially the f of x is just cancel and I get what I have in the previous line. But how does that help us? Well, it helps us because now I've got a different density here. I've got f of x. 
And now I'm just essentially taking the expectation of this first part of the expression with respect to f of x. So this whole expression here just becomes the expectation with respect to f of x times g of x over f of x. Well, why does that help us? Well, the idea is that here, because I'm taking the expectation with respect to the fair die, essentially, I can just throw the fair die a number of times, and then I can come up with an approximation to this expectation just in the same manner as we did before. So the approximation here would just be equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n. But now, instead of just having x, I have x times g of x over f of x. So now I just have xi times g of xi over f of xi. So as long as I'm able to evaluate the ratio of the densities for any given value of x, x here just being an integer between 1 and 6, then I can come up with an estimate of the mean of the bias die by throwing the fair die. Now, to prove to you that I'm not just sort of making this up, it seems a bit magical that I can throw the fair die and yet get an estimate of the mean of the bias die, I'm now going to simulate this computationally using Mathematica. So what I've done here is, in each case, I've calculated the ratio of g of x divided through by f of x. So we can see for 1 that this sort of ratio, this weight that we're going to apply to 1 is actually going to be about 3. Then for 2, it's going to be 1.5, and it's declining all the way to 6. So we can see that essentially what's going to happen is we're going to give the sort of lower value points more weight, which is going to sort of bias downwards the sample mean that we obtain towards that of the bias die. So here in the left-hand plot, I'm sort of assuming that we're starting on 6, and so 6 is the number that is showing here, and we're shading this slightly darker so that you can see which of the ratios is being applied. And then on the right-hand side, I have in the top here the running mean of the fair die and the current value which is thrown for the fair die. So as you see, it's starting on 6 here. And then below that, I have the same but for the bias die. And it is slightly different because now we're working out a running sort of weighted mean where the weights are given by the ratio of G to F. And I'm actually going to represent those weights visually. So 6 here is a small point because we're giving that essentially a very low weight. And what we're now going to see as I press play is that even though our fair die, as I sort of run this over time, the, the sample mean of the fair die tends to its true value, which is three and a half. Because of this weighting that I'm doing to the bias die, the running sort of weighted mean of the bias die by sort of magic is actually tending towards the true mean of the bias die. And that approximation gets better and better as time goes on. So just to emphasize again, you can see here for the bias die that essentially what's going on is we're giving a large weight to, to 1 and 2 and a relatively smaller weight to the higher numbers. And because of that, that is biasing downwards the mean that we obtain because we're applying these sort of weights to each of the, the values that show up on our die which means that we're able to get a good correspondence between the true and the estimated mean of the bias die. So just to write this out again, essentially what we have here is we have the, the expected value of x under g is given by the expectation under f of x times g of x over f of x. And we approximated this by 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times the ratio of g of xi over f of xi. And so this sort of ratio here on the right is commonly referred to as the sort of weights of uh, important sampling. Well, you say, OK, well, that's, that's interesting, but is it actually helpful? Because, after all, if we can calculate the ratio of g to f, then really we could have just worked out what the mean of the die was anyway. So the reason that this is interesting is because even though I've illustrated this for a simple univariate discrete example, this holds for continuous multivariate or discrete multivariate examples as well. 
And in those circumstances, it may be analytically impossible to work out a quantity of interest, say the mean of whatever it distribution you're looking at. Another reason that this is interesting is that it turns out G doesn't actually have to be normalized for this to work. So we're going to imagine that G is sort of known up to a proportion, but its sort of normalizing factor, Z here, is unknown. So it's an unnormalized distribution. The question is, can we still use important sampling to work out what the mean of G is? Well, the answer is we can, because essentially all we do here is we have the expectation of X under G is equal to, it's the sum, because X is a continuous random variable, over all X of X times H of X over Z, which we can then use our sort of trick on to rewrite as the sum over X of X times H of X over F of X times Z times F of X. Okay, which we can then sort of approximate by 1 over Z, we can just take the Z outside, of 1 over N times the sum from I equals 1 to N of X I H of X I over F of X I. And all of the X I's here, as they should be above and probably on the previous page as well, are with respect to F. They're being drawn from F. So if I just write on F's here. Okay, well, I've come up with an expression or an approximation, but is this actually useful because of the fact that we've still got this nuisance constant Z here? Well, the answer is that it is still useful because of the fact that we can use a bit of a trick to work out what Z is via importance sampling. We could say, well, what's the expected value under G of the constant 1? Well, it doesn't matter what distribution you evaluate the expectation of 1 with respect to. It's just a constant, and it's always equal to 1. But we could rewrite this as just 1 being equal to the sum over x of h of x over z. Because, you know, that's what the expectation with respect to g actually means. Which we can in turn rearrange to get that z is equal to the sum over x of h of x. Which, of course, it does. It's the normalizing constant. Well, why does that help us? Well, the idea is that we can rewrite this using our trick again as being the sum over all x of h of x over f of x times f of x. So now we can approximate this by just 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of h of x i over f of x i. So in other words, the sample mean weight that we obtain. So Z, our estimator of Z, our normalizing constant, is just equal to the sample mean weight that we obtain across drawing lots of samples from the distribution F. And because we can work out what Z is, or we can estimate what Z is, that means that we can work out the mean of G. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us, if I sort of write somewhere in the middle here, that the expected value under G of X is just equal to, what is this expression on the right really equal? Well, this is the sample mean value of x times our weight. In other words, a sort of weighted mean of x divided through by the sample mean of w, our weight. So in this video, we've seen even if we can't sample from a given distribution, and hence we can't use direct sampling to determine quantities of interest for that particular distribution, so long as we're able to sample from another distribution, then we can apply weights to the samples that we obtain from that other distribution to enable us to evaluate quantities of interest in the first distribution. And that's what important sampling is.